What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I wanna answer a question that I've seen online many times on Reddit, on Quora, on Blind. This is a question that a lot of people have asked me personally. And that question is usually some derivative of should I get a master's degree or even a PhD in computer science if I want to be a software engineer? if I want to have the best possible job as a software engineer. And sometimes this question is phrased a little bit differently. Sometimes it's something like, will getting a master's or a PhD in computer science maximize my chances of getting into Google, for example, or Fang? Or sometimes it's someone who has the option between the two. Someone will be like, hey, I got an offer from Google and I got an offer from the Stanford PhD program. Which one should I select? But the point is they all kind of come down to the same thing. Should I get a master's or a PhD if I want to be a software engineer? And this is what I'm going to answer in this video. And I just want to make it very clear that I am not answering the question of whether you should get a PhD in computer science if you want to end up as a tenured professor in computer science at Stanford University. No, that's not the question that I'm answering. I'm not well versed in that. I'm going to be talking about, you know, for the context of software engineering, not academia or things like that. So just please keep that in mind. But so now that I've said that, my answer to the question of whether you should pursue a master's or a PhD in computer science is no, absolutely not. Now, I'm going to explain what I mean by this or why I'm saying absolutely not in just a second. I do want to make one more disclaimer here, which is that if you happen to be someone right now who is pursuing a master's or a PhD in computer science, I am by no means trying to put you down. At this point, you've already made the decision to pursue these degrees. So, you know, go for it, you know, finish what you've started. I'm really just trying to offer my opinion for people who are considering pursuing these degrees. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I am just you know, some random dude on the internet who's in desperate need of a haircut and I'm just sharing my opinion. So take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I'm not a voice of authority on this, but let's explain why I think that you shouldn't pursue a master's or a PhD. It really comes down to three things. And the first one is the cost of the master's or the PhD. See, the cost of these degrees, and here I'm going to mainly talk about the US, although you'll see in a second my, my arguments actually apply wherever you are, but the cost of these degrees is absolutely insane. It's a huge cost, and you really, really have to ask yourself if it is worth, if these degrees, rather, are worth the cost. So let's take the master's degree for to start. And in the US, a master's degree is usually going to take at least one year, maybe two years, usually probably two years, and it's going to cost somewhere between like $30,000 and $50,000 a year. And as far as I know, at the master's level, you usually can't get financial aid. You're going to be taking out loans for those degrees, loans that you'll eventually have to repay. So basically, you're going to be going further into debt, assuming you're already in debt from college or from coding boot camp or whatever. You're going to be going further into debt to get these degrees, non-trivial amounts of debt. That is already a huge cost. And here, some of you might be saying, but wait, for a PhD program, sometimes you actually don't have to pay, although a lot of them you do have to pay. But for some of them, you'll actually get paid for the PhD program, provided that you work a little bit, you know, provided that you teach students maybe, like undergrads, you might get paid a small stipend but it's not that much. And either way, this doesn't really matter because the real cost of these degrees comes in the form of an opportunity cost. You see, when you're doing a master's degree for two years or a PhD for let's say three to seven years, seven years is insane, not only are you, you know, paying to take the program or to get the degree, but you are also not working in the industry. You are also foregoing a salary, a compensation package that you would otherwise get in the industry. So let's assume that instead of doing your master's, you were to go to Google and work at Google as a software engineer for two years instead of doing a master's for two years. At Google, an entry-level software engineer would probably make around $200,000 a year. But let's go more conservative. Let's assume you're in a low cost of living area, although the cost kind of like 
doesn't really matter at that point, kind of, um, it, it's just as good, but let's just assume for the sake of good order that you're making 150K a year. That's still, over two years, $300,000 that you would have made at Google. You wouldn't have accrued $50,000 or $80,000 of debt over two years. So you're better off by going to Google for two years or any other software engineering job for two years than getting the master's by a factor of like, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is a lot of money. That is a giant cost, and it gets bigger and bigger the longer your program is. So if you're doing a five-year PhD program, that starts to get huge, right? You could be promoted during that time, maybe promoted twice. You could be literally foregoing up to like a million or more dollars over the span of five or seven years of salary that you could have had working as a software engineer. So it's a huge, huge cost. And I want to especially emphasize this point to all you younglings watching this video, because I know that back when I was you know, in college, I wanted to pursue an MBA directly after college, and I'm glad that that didn't pan out for me, because I had this warped vision in my mind where I was like, okay, yeah, people have told me that there was going to be an opportunity cost and I'll be in debt, but you know, it doesn't matter that much, whatever, you know? I haven't made any money yet anyway, so it can't be that bad. Trust me, it is bad. Trust me, you would rather be, let's say, 25 years old or 26 years old with a few hundred thousand dollars saved up, or even more, than be 25 or 26 years old with zero money saved up and be in debt. So that's the first reason for which you shouldn't get a master's or a PhD. But now this brings us to the second reason, because some of you might be thinking, well, wait, Clement, okay, it's not great from a financial point of view, right? Clearly, there's an opportunity cost, there's the debt, blah, blah, blah. But by getting a master's or a PhD, I might be increasing my chances of getting a good job. Like maybe it'll maximize my chances of getting a job at Google, for example. And also maybe it's going to allow me to command a higher starting salary at a company like Google. And maybe that'll make up for the entire cost of the degree. But here the unfortunate truth is that no, having a master's or a PhD, and I'll put a little bit of a caveat on the PhD here. So disregard the PhD for just a second. I'll get back to it. But let's talk about a master's. Having a master's will not only not help you land a job at, let's say, Google, but it's also not going to help you command a higher salary or compensation package at Google or any other big tech company and even big tech startups and so on. Why? Well, first of all, once you've gotten an interview at these tech companies, I've said this many times before on this channel and I'll say it again, the only thing that matters for you to get the job once you have the interview is your performance in the interviews. It doesn't matter if you have a master's degree, a PhD, a bachelor's, no college degree, a coding bootcamp, self-taught, doesn't matter. Once you're in the interview room, all that matters is your performance on the interviews, which is why you have to do really well on them. And if you're trying to do really well on your coding interviews or systems design interviews, then do check out my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code Clem, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. Some of you might be saying, okay, fine, it won't help me once I have the interviews, but maybe it'll help me get the interviews. And here I would just really argue, listen, if you can't get an interview at Google, let's say straight out of college or out of coding bootcamp, that's fine, that happens. But paying you know, $350,000 worth of total cost to potentially have a higher chance of catching a recruiter's eyes is not the way to do it. Get a couple years of work experience at another company in the industry, even if it's a you know, not the best software engineering job. And then there are better ways to catch recruiters' eyes than to just like, you know, pay 350K worth of total cost to get a master's degree that might, you know, give you an edge. There's like not a sound way to think about it. And then if we look at whether a master's degree will help you command a higher starting salary, that's unfortunately also not going to be the case. And here I'll talk specifically about companies like Google or Facebook, though I think that this is applicable to most other tech companies. But at Google, if you interview and you have a master's degree and you don't have any other industry experience, you will be interviewing for an L3 entry-level position. The exact same position, exact same pay as someone with no master's degree, even someone with no college degree whatsoever. You'll both be on the same footing and they might even get paid more 
if they do better in their coding interviews. That's just how it works. These companies will not give you more credit or more value if you have a master's degree, because at the end of the day, they care far more about industry experience and how you perform in the interviews than your credentials. And that's really sad because unfortunately, it just means that these master's degree are just not that valuable to these companies. Now, the reason I said there's a caveat with the PhD is that the PhD is a tiny bit different. With the PhD, you might actually have a little bit of an edge when you're trying to land interviews at these companies because for some roles, a few roles, things like you know, research scientist, you might actually need to have a PhD. So PhDs might actually be a prerequisite for a select few roles. And also at Google, if you are applying as a PhD, you will usually be leveled at the L4 level, so the middle level, you know, the second level. Although I have seen some PhDs after their interview performance get down leveled to L3. So you could still end up getting your first job after your PhD as an L3 engineer at Google. And then even if you do get that L4 job, you know, straight out of your PhD, it's very, very debatable. And to be honest, it's not even debatable. Mathematically, it's not debatable. You will still be at a loss financially compared to if you had just gotten you know, into L3 at Google straight out of your undergrad or coding bootcamp or whatever. So the point of the matter here is that if you're a PhD, there is you know, a little bit of positive, which is that you will likely be leveled at L4 rather than L3, though it's still possible to be L3. And you know, if you're looking for specifically a research scientist role or that type of role, you might need a PhD. But again, if we go back to the original question, which is, let's say you just want to be a software engineer, you're just trying to maximize your software engineering career. Maybe you want to be a manager. Maybe you want to be, you know, just a, a high level individual contributor software engineer. Then a PhD is by no means necessary and it really isn't worth it from this point of view. The last thing that I wanted to touch on here was just whether or not the stuff that you're going to learn in a master's program or in a PhD program will be really useful and then give you some sort of big advantage later on in your career or on the job, you know, once you land the job. And here, once again, unfortunately, the answer is for the most part, no. At the end of the day, there's a reason that these companies will not for example, give you a higher paying job or a higher level if you come out of a master's degree because they know that what you learn in a master's program simply doesn't really translate to the type of work that you'll do on the job in the industry. So you'd be far more better off getting a couple years of industry experience at another company or you know at whatever dream company you want to work at. It doesn't matter. Just that a company as a software engineer, that'll put you farther ahead as far as you know career skills than whatever you learn in your master's program or in your PhD program. Again, here the only caveat is if you're someone who's really going for a very sort of niche or research type of field, you know, maybe in like a deep ML research or something like that, then maybe the PhD is gonna be relevant, but otherwise, for the most part, Whatever you learn in a PhD or a master's will not be the type of skill or the type of knowledge that really gives you an advantage on the job as a normal software engineer. So these were all my reasons for not pursuing a master's degree or a PhD in computer science if your goal is just to maximize your software engineering career. At the end of the day, it's just way too expensive. It's not going to give you an advantage both from a salary point of view or from a getting the job point of view. And the stuff that you'll learn in those programs will likely be not super useful to you on the job later on in your career. That being said, I will just say that there is one case where it might make sense genuinely to pursue a master's degree or a PhD, and that's if you're the type of person who is genuinely passionate about learning computer science at an academic level, you like the paradigm of academia, if that's you, then perhaps pursuing a master's or a PhD will truly be beneficial. But even in that case, I would very much encourage you to ask yourself if this desire to learn you know, an academic level, a deep academic level of computer science is worth the huge financial burden that it will put 
on your early life. And of course, once again, if you're someone who knows that they want to be a research scientist and you know that the positions that you're eyeing require a PhD, or if you want to get into academia, you want to be a professor, you want to be a professional researcher, not even at a tech company, then in those cases, you probably know better than I do and you probably know what you're doing. Go for it. You know, I don't have an argument for you there. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope that you appreciated the insight that I shared here. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Maybe I missed some points. If you did like the video or found it educational, informational, insightful, then don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.